Going into my second year at Iowa, I was hoping to take over the starting quarterback job. I was extra excited because my favorite high school teammate, Craig Ostrander, had transferred to Iowa to fill out our receiving core. But the coaching staff was making me battle it out with Alex Padilla, and I'm not gonna lie, my preseason got off to a rough start. I shook back by hitting my favorite target from high school, but unfortunately, Alex Padilla was outperforming me in practice, and Kirk Ferentz gave him the start in our first game. I had expected to take the reins this year, so after he played very well, I was worried I might spend another year on the bench. What's more, I hurt my throwing arm, and I was having too tough a time throwing straight to make a splash in practice. I had to watch from the sidelines again as we took down Iowa State, and this season was really not going how I'd expected. But then we got embarrassed by Texas State, and Alex Padilla had a bad game. I got another chance to win a start, and I knew I couldn't underperform anymore. I figured that if the coaches could see that I brought a new dimension to the offense with my athleticism, they might give me a shot. I was able to get loose for a long touchdown run, and I had a great day passing the ball, so I finally earned a start against Pitt. I was so nervous for my first drive as a college QB that my arms were shaking and I could not throw the ball straight at all on my first drive. Our run game wasn't working at all and I knew I had to flash something to stay in the game, so I found Ostrander for a long third down conversion and the first completion of my college career. Unfortunately, I got absolutely folded on the next play and on third down, I missed my target by a mile. Pittsburgh was swarming me with pressure and after a throwaway, Brian Ferentz made a conservative run call and just like that, it was third down again. I knew I was going to have Arlen Bruce open, but I airmailed him badly. My first quarter had gone horribly, but on third and long, I finally hit a big pass play to Arlen Bruce, and I was just starting to loosen up a bit when I got flattened by the pass rush. Brian Ferentz showed no trust in my arm as we took a measly two-yard gain on a tunnel screen. Luckily, our defense was absolutely shutting Pitt down, and Coach Ferentz was shockingly aggressive with 30 seconds left in the half. I knew I needed to make a play, so I threw a strike to my favorite target to get us rolling. Then on the next play, I didn't like what I was seeing deep, so I rolled to my right and showed off my speed to pick up the first down. I sliced up a pit cover six with a dart to Keegan Johnson, and with time running down, I got us inside the 10. But with six seconds left, I thought I had a touchdown, but Johnson got tackled short, and the time ran out on the clock, so we ended the half with a pathetic 0-0 score. I was determined to have a better second half, and I was slowly getting into rhythm as I threw an absolute strike to Luke Lachey with pressure in my face. I was hoping he would score, but he couldn't quite outrun the defense. I continued to get the ball to my tight ends, but on first down, I put way more air into my throw than I meant to, and I'd thrown the first interception of my career. I was extremely frustrated that things were going so poorly, and I knew it was going to be embarrassing if we got shut out in my first start. I was driving us down the field, but on third down, I got whacked, so I had to convert a big fourth down. I rolled out to the left, but everything was clamped up, and I couldn't quite make it happen. I was continually getting pounded by Pitt's D-line, and my coach trust was in the gutter. Pittsburgh finally broke the stalemate with a defensive touchdown, and I was determined to clutch up for my team. I scrambled to my right and fought for the first down, but I lost the ball, and Pitt cashed it in to put them up 14. I knew we were probably screwed and this might be my last start of the season, but I was still fighting and trying to lead us down the field. I was able to get us back inside the red zone with another scramble, but then I threw another terrible pass and that was that. I'd had an awful debut and everyone on Twitter was saying I was trash after I couldn't even score a single touchdown. After the pick game, I was back to being number two on the depth chart and the coaches had lost all their trust in me. I had to work my way all the way back up from ground zero and it was hard when I was struggling so much with accuracy. I guess that's what you get with the 0-100 to 100 sliders. I'd found that I needed to warm up with some easy completions before I could count on my passes being accurate. I started to get cooking in practice, and after rolling out to my left, I made a ridiculous throw across my body for a touchdown. Honestly, after such a tough performance in my first game, this might have been my best practice yet. Even though my first start went badly, I had improved so much from where I was as a freshman. I was starting to develop chemistry with my secondary receivers, but I didn't get the nod in the Minnesota game, and our offense was honestly looking better without me. We had a chance to shut Minnesota down, but they were able to score late in the fourth, and we were down 17-14 to with a minute left. But Alex Padilla was cool as a fan as he let us down the field, and we punched it in for the go-ahead score. Unfortunately, Minnesota put a last-second drive of their own together, and they went for the kill on the final play to take home the Floyd of Rosedale. The season was going bad for both me and my team, and I couldn't build on my good practice from last week. I was getting bum-rushed and my passes were shaky. I watched as we got hammered by Michigan State, and I was already thinking ahead to next season, but then Alex Padilla injured his elbow in practice. Suddenly, I was getting another start against Northwestern, and this was really my last chance to prove myself this season. I knew that I had to get into a rhythm early to succeed, and completing my first pass for a first down was huge for my confidence. I was actually getting off to a great start as I hit Lachey over the middle for a big gain, but of course, he fumbled it and Northwestern recovered. It was annoying how bad my luck was with this offense, but I knew I had to play level-headed and make smart reads like this dump-off. Our running game was working a lot better today, 
but our line was still having trouble protecting me, so we had to convert on a third and 19. I knew I had to get the ball out quick, but I delivered a perfect strike with defenders in my face. I was feeling as good as I'd ever felt, and I rolled out to hit a wide open Craig Ostrander, and he almost took it in for my first touchdown pass. But sadly, we got stuffed on the goal line, and I was going to go crazy if we came away from another drive with nothing. Luckily, Drew Johnson finally got us on the board. Our defense got a stop, and I tried to lead Arlen Bruce up field, but I threw my first bad pass of the day. Suddenly, I was feeling shaky again. On third and 11, I had a wide open receiver, but I got lit up. Our defense got us a turnover, but my arm was giving me trouble again. I was worried the Iowa coaches were going to start thinking I was a head case, as I missed another pass. And on third down, there was nothing open. I rolled out, and my dude Lachey actually came open, but I missed him by a mile. With 40 seconds left in the half, the coaches were putting more trust in me than they probably should have, but I finally threw the ball straight for a completion over the middle. On third and five, I decided to get out of the pocket, and I saw Craig come wide open, so I hit him perfectly in stride for a huge gain. Brian Ferentz kept calling stupid, slow-developing play-action passes, which was nothing new, and I scrambled to get us inside the five, but coach decided to take the field goal, so I ended another half without a touchdown. We opened up the second half with a nice completion, and I was feeling good, but Brian Ferentz called another slow-developing play-action that I knew I wouldn't have time for, so I just threw it away. On third down, I saw the safety creeping down to blitz, so I knew I'd have Ostrander for an easy pickup. Our offensive play calling was actually pissing me off at this point, and on third down, Caleb Johnson dropped an easy first down catch. Then on fourth down, the defensive look confused me, and after I tried to scramble, I got stopped short. Northwestern had put us down eight, and I knew we had to put up some points on this drive. I decided I needed to use my legs more and improvise. Brian Ferentz called a read option, and I decided to ignore the read and just keep it. After I made the DN look silly, I showed off some speed and took it into Northwestern territory for a giant gain. Unfortunately, a wide open Luke Lachey decided to just not put his hands up to catch the ball, so we had to kick yet another field goal. On our next drive, we ran a nice play to my favorite teammate, Craig Ostrander, and he made it third and manageable. Coach called a stupid screenplay, and once again, I decided to just ignore the call, but after my scramble got stopped short, I got chewed out on the sidelines. Northwestern went up 12, and our hope was running out. I knew I was going to have to move us down the field fast, so I got out of the pocket to hit a wide open Keegan Johnson, who almost took it all the way to the house. I hurried us to the line, and at this point, I was locked in, as I hit Lachey over the middle, and after we pitched it out to Caleb Johnson, he got to the edge and put us within six. Our defense had to get a stop, and I thought Northwestern would pick up the third and one for sure, but for some reason Pat Fitzgerald decided to pass the ball and it was incomplete. We had one last chance, and I felt like my entire football career had been leading up to this moment. Getting out of the pocket was my comfort zone at this point, and my mobility allowed Ostrander to get wide open for a big completion. We were into Northwestern territory, and we might have had someone deep, but I got scared, so I just took the safe play and scrambled to the sideline. At this point, I wasn't too worried about the clock, and it was probably better if we didn't leave any time for their offense, so I continued to take safe passes. With the clock moving under a minute, I got us inside the 10 with a long scramble, and my teammates were hyping me up to win us the game. All I knew is I did not want to throw a pick, and we got inside the 5, but our running game got stuffed, so it was all on me to score. On third down, I thought I had Gavin Williams for a touchdown, but he got stopped short, so we had one last chance to win the game. Coach was calling a great goal line play, and I was looking for Ostrander on the short in route. I dropped back and hit him in the end zone for the game winning touchdown, and I was so excited that I lifted him up in the air with my tiny 5-5 body. Honestly, I could barely see over the line on this play, but I knew I could count on my boy Ostrander. We kicked the field goal to escape Northwestern with a huge win, and I was the hero for the first time in my college career.